Professor Gregory Cabin Wilde Edinburgh, August 5, 1915 The Skeptics Club of Philadelphia Dear Dr. Cabin Wilde, we have heard many wondrous things about your skeptical society across the pond. We read your public thrashing of Mr. Westcott's foolish occultism with great relish. Given your rigorous scientific approach to disproving the existence of witchcraft, superstition, and other pernicious beliefs, I am convinced that you and your compatriots are just the fellows to unravel the mystery of our strange little stone. Though I have no doubt our mutual friend has explained our quandary to you, I shall relate the details once more in the interests of posterity, it cannot be chipped or otherwise altered by any power known to us. My lads and I have made all efforts to do so, with no visible result. We have used hammers, chisels, drills, acids, furnaces, a caustic agent, and even rolled over it thrice with a boulder, two tons. One foolish boy even suggested dynamite, and I would be lying if I said I was not sorely tempted by the notion. The matter vexes us to no end, for, as you must be aware, we cannot determine a substance's composition if it will not react to chemicals or otherwise permit some portion of it to be separated from the whole. Your expertise in this matter would therefore be deeply appreciated. In all honesty, I am glad to be rid of the thing, if only for now. My lads are good Christian men, but many are mentally timid. This item brings them some consternation. At least one believes it is evidence that our Lord has finally made a rock that even he cannot pull asunder. Here is to the hope that your laboratory is made of stronger stuff than ours. Sincerely, Daniel McIntyre Director of Archaeology Scottish National Museum It has been said that the most important phrase in science is not Eureka, but rather, that's funny. This is false. The most important phrase in science occurs during a late Wednesday afternoon on September 1, 1915 inside a laboratory at the Philadelphia Institute of Chemistry. With a crinkled brow and an exasperated grunt, Miss Annette Theodora Lang throws her head back and utters the five words which will alter the very course of human destiny, what if it's an anomaly? Besides her, there are two others in the room, Wilson Hutchinson is a young and handsome mathematician in an ill-fitting tweed jacket. He was once described as the Lord Byron of hydrodynamics. Seated beside him is Professor Gregory Caben Wilde the oldest of the trio and the man to whom this laboratory belongs. He is a leading mind in the field of theoretical physics. Cabe Mild removes a tin case from his breast pocket, opens it, plucks out a cigarette, then snaps it shut. Once he has slid the tin back into his pocket, he delicately taps the thin, pale cylinder against the back of his knuckle. An anomaly? He nudges the cigarette between his lips. For a moment, Annette Lang regrets her choice in words. She is a scientist, and, as Cabin World is quite fond of reminding them both, a scientist recognizes that there is no distinction between the natural and the unnatural. An anomaly is merely that which your current model fails to account for. But the more she considers it, the more she starts to wonder if she is not onto something, we can find no end to the golden filigree's iterative patterns. Each layer forms smaller and smaller shapes, repeating until our instruments can no longer discern them. And we only presume the filigree is gold, because we cannot test it. We cannot test any of it, she says, throwing her arms up in exasperation. The entire object is chemically inert and indivisible. It is impenetrable via radiation and emits warmth without apparent source. Submergence in liquid nitrogen and molten steel both failed to measurably impact its temperature. And when we sought to change its shape, it broke the hydraulic press. Hutchinson grimaces in memory. Cabe Mild produces a brass lighter, igniting the tip of his cigarette. Your point, Miss Lang? Her eyes fall down to the smooth, fist-sized onyx gemstone sheathed in spiraling gold. It defies all we know about physics, chemistry and natural law. Either everything we know is in error. Or this is. Gregory, I don't think this object is supposed to exist. So it defies our models. So what? Hutchinson replies. No model is perfect. Abstract sleek. 
The point of science is to find where our models break, so we can refine our models, update them, make them. This is not akin to discovering epicycles are wrong, or believing in luminiferous ether or phlogiston, lank counters. Our models are incomplete, yes. But they are not incomplete by an order of this magnitude. This is, it's as if we've proven that pi has been 3 all along. Or determined the earth is flat. Or found an integer hidden between 4 and 5. What shall we do, then? Throw it away? Destroy it? Hutchinson folds his arms. Science is about accepting reality as it is, not as we wish it to be. We cannot destroy it, because insofar as we can tell, it cannot be destroyed, Lang says. And if we accept that? If we accept that an object like this can, does, and should, exist? We concede the very notion that immutable laws can be derived. For God's sake, Wilson, it violates Newton's third law. How can we build a model of physics without Newton's third law? Cabe Moyle takes a long, slow pull from his cigarette. When he exhales, the clouds of smoke unravel into twisting strands that lick at the ceiling. What would you suggest, Miss Lang? Lang lowers her hands into her lap and bites down on her bottom lip. Perhaps we should consider, perhaps we should consider that this object does not operate on the physical laws that govern our world. Hutchinson's face creases with frustration. What, Cabin Wilde lifts his hand, cutting him off. Still gnawing at her lip, Lang continues, perhaps it does not obey our physical laws, but someone else's. Perhaps, by those laws, its properties are reasonable and sound. But by ours? They are not. By our physical laws, it is anomalous. Cabin Wilde has that familiar look. His brows are squeezed together like two immense cogs in an adding machine grinding their way through a particularly difficult polynomial. You are suggesting that there may be a set of physical laws governing this object which are distinct from our own. Yes. How? Huh? Why? From where? Hutchinson's indignation swells. Is this premise even falsifiable? How would you test something like this? I do not know. By ascertaining the laws governing the anomaly, Cabin Wilde replies. By constructing a model independent of our own, via experimentation. And, as you develop that model, working to reconcile it with the broader model of science, determine via experimentation whether two completely independent systems of physics could coexist. Lang nods. And, if so, determine from whence this adjacent system came. You have your hypothesis, Miss Lang. Now go forth and test it.